Hi, Gaurav. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you? Good, good, good. Fantastic. I've been on the road uh, since the morning and um, I'm in Kumaon right now um, uh, near Jageshwar. Okay. So I stopped on a roadside dhaba and uh, this this man opened up his little guest house and he says, you can sit here. Nice and of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do your webinar while I'll get you a cup of tea. So I'm sitting in this uh, roadside um, guest house and he's given me some place to to, to sit and stop and, you know, conduct this webinar. Uh, the, the weather is uh, chilly. It's, it's it's getting cold now in, in the hills, you know. And but the rain stopped? Me, yeah, the rain stopped. Okay. And it's green everywhere. So there are little, uh, you know, streams flowing around. And then the water is still muddy in some places. Hmm. And it's clear, uh, absolutely blue in some places. It's beautiful. So, so friends... Um, uh, well, they're joining in right now. Uh, welcome, welcome, friends. How are you doing? How are you, uh, Zina, Usha Ji, Vinita, Roy? Roy, how are you doing, my friend? Last time we met um, uh, was in um, uh, Valpare, uh, and we were we were shooting um, uh, Lion Tail Mukaks together. Uh, this is about a month and a half ago. Uh, welcome, Priya. Welcome, Harpreet. Um, so I'm just going to wait for another two minutes and then get started. Um, there are people joining in. So this is going to be a short webinar because half of it is kind of recap of what we've done earlier. But it's a very, very important webinar. And you will know in uh, you know during the course of this webinar why it's so important. It's, it's about homestays, boutique homestays, small hotel owners, small business owners who are completely dependent on uh, not so much on business processes, but on the visitors who visit them. So it's important to, to go deeper into this aspect to understand how uh, to manage their visitors so that it, it's a win-win situation for them and for you. Um, if you if you can hear me well and if I'm fully audible, then just type yes in this chat, so I know that uh, you we're going okay. The the other thing is that um, uh, since I am connected on my mobile, there are chances that I'll uh, you know uh, the signal will drop. Anyway, uh, Gaurav is here and he'll continue to uh, work with the webinar and I can log back in sure. when it's required. So, yes, yeah, so I'm, I am audible, if, uh, people are saying. Thank you very much. And let me get started now with uh, the... Hi, Salil, how are you? So, first of all, I'd like to thank my, my team and Gaurav uh, for working very hard on this webinar and all the webinars that they've been doing. The, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Priya, uh, Fareen, Salil, Gaurav, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, a lot many others who, who worked hard on creating these presentations. This is eventually going to be a very meaningful course. Um, right now, all these earlier webinars are on, on YouTube channel, which you can see. And this one will also have a replay link tomorrow in case if you miss out some parts of it or the signal drops or something, you'd still be able to see this presentation tomorrow uh, in your email, you'll get a link. So let me get started with this. So why are we doing these webinars, uh, friends? Uh, uh, you know, we are a 28 year old um, experiential tourism company and I think we've gained enough knowledge to run these little homestays in these remote places and the reason we felt was uh, these webinars are important is because after COVID this revenge tourism started and people wanted to keep themselves safe they didn't want to go to the hotels they wanted to go to small places but they started to compare these little homestays, boutique places, you know, with the other hotels. 
So we want to tell you as homestay owners what you should do to get the right clients and to have the right communication with them. What will be your takeaway? You'd be able to nurture the region uh, or landscape you operate in. You'd be able to influence the visitors and it'll have a lot of uh, positive effect on your business uh, to scale up. So it's a step-by-step -step process. There are 10 webinars uh, over 10 months. I think we've already done three and this is the fourth one. And if you want, if you missed the earlier ones, you can go back to the YouTube channel and see them. You'll get the link in a short while. So, so we've we've covered uh, creating USP. We've covered management and compliances. Uh, we're doing visitor management today, and uh, we are going to. I think it's the third one, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the third one that we're doing. And you can take a screenshot of this if you like. Can you see it clearly, this one? Okay, so quick introduction about me. I am Mohit Agarwal, and I have this with four children, two, uh, a son and a daughter, and two non-humans. One is a Labrador, and the other one is an escapee African Grey. I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist, and I'm on the board of Asian Ecotourism Network, um, and I've been trained in sustainable tourism. Um, Asian Adventures is a 28-year-old travel outfit. It's the largest birding company in India. And it's also I'm also the founder of NatiNet, a company that sort of is working towards um, all ecotourism aspects and uh, other environment-related, um, uh, you know, uh, businesses. These companies are on a large mission to help Asian elephants with their corridors, free the Himalayas of plastic waste. We just started with a small project called Saving the Pangolins of Deer. And we also help small wildlife NGOs. And my personal interest is to conserve the ancient Himalayan temples, the originality of the ancient Himalayan temples. So, so this is a bit about me. And the next one is about Gaurav. Gaurav, go ahead and speak about yourself, please. Uh, thanks, Mohit. Uh, so my name is Gaurav Nalkur. I live in Pune. I am an avid bird watcher and I have a deep love for nature. And uh, in addition to this, I'm a strong believer in using wildlife tourism to raise awareness and aid conservation science. Uh, professionally, I'm training to be an ecotourism expert, especially to work with uh, community tourism stakeholders such as homestays, for example. And educationally, I'm qualified as a wildlife biologist. Uh, interested especially in bird behavior and I've worked on urban bird diversity, giant squirrels and bird niches in the Himalayas. For the last four years, I've been lucky to work with Asian Adventures, a company uh, that shares my vision of using wildlife tourism and ecotourism as a means to help preserve the natural world. Thanks. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> And so Asian Ecotourism Network is um, uh, is an Asia-specific uh, uh, forum where you can become a member. If you go on to Facebook and you see Asian Ecotourism Network, you'd be able to find them there. And then you can sign up to be a member or you can go to their website. And uh, you can learn a lot about the standards that they're creating uh, or they've created for the lodges, which you can apply and you can uh, get certified by them. Planetera is another organization that we work with and Planetera is focused on community-based tourism. So what they've done is uh, they work with, I think in 250, um, uh, they've got 253 projects in 70 countries and they've, they've established uh, norms, uh, SOPs, uh, standard operating procedures for community-based tourism. So there's a lot to learn from these two. If you follow them um, on social media, you'd be able to get a lot of information. The earlier webinars that we've done, um, creating a USP and management um, and compliances are there on YouTube. You can go ahead and take a screenshot of this one. And you can visit them if you haven't seen these ones earlier. Let me just see if uh, if anybody can um, 
post these links um, at some point of time. Uh, Priya uh, or Salil, can you ask Fareen to put these links whenever you know uh, she, she gets a chance? Or we can even send them to you in email. So, so why visitor management? So it's a very important to meet clients' expectations because the clients are now talking about that, why should I go to a homestay instead of going to a hotel? Or they are coming to homestay because they want to feel good about it. You know, some people think that they want to contribute more to the local economy. Some people think that they're better off and because they get personalized service. So, or some people might think, I want to go to a pretty place. I don't want to stay in a hotel, but I still want hotel facilities, you know. So there's, there's a lot of uh, mismatch in expectations that happens. And, and this one, this particular webinar is focused on how to look at visitor management really. So ensuring repeat business. If your business is getting repeated in the sense your clients are coming back to you, then your client acquisition cost is a lot less. And it works through word of mouth, it works through referrals, it works through many other means because these people are then connected with you for a long period of time because they've, they've had life-changing experiences because they stayed with you. Now, if you don't get in touch with them again and again, then they'll forget you. So that in due course. And it is the responsibility of us to convert every regular tourist into an ecotourist. And this is where conservation will come in. This is where ecotourism will come in. This is where ethics and um, good practices will come in. Fair trade practices will come in. Moving to the next one. Why, why this homestay webinar thing is a life-changing game? You know, or how it can be. So responsible and ethical activities or experiences that you will give, enhancing your reputation because of your good practices. You know, positive cycle where you'd be able to get more reviews, generate more good reviews and whatever. And then sustainability and inflow of resources. So if you can do all these things together, you will help nature, you will help the community, you will help the homestay, you will help the tourists and you will help yourself. And then you will be a market leader. So it's a, it's a life changing game for you and for others. <coughs> I've, I've dealt with this before, but I'm just bringing it back to you uh, to, to know, um, to see if you know this earlier um, and if you're already practicing it. Who's your client? Are you selling to everybody who comes to your doorstep? If you are, then it'll be, it'll be difficult because then people will come to you with certain expectations. And if he's not your kind of client, he's going to be unhappy. He's, he's going to say that, oh, this is not my kind of place. You know, I, I just feel cheated or I feel let down or I, this is not where I wanted to be. Correct. So you must match your product, your hotel, your homestay with the kind of clients you think should stay with you or you've got that experience that you know what sort of clients will stay with you. So someone who live, who loves your architecture, location, somebody who's interested in your activities, uh, who likes your traditions, food, culture, who believes in your, your family values or your personal values or your business values. So all these things matter. I've already covered this in the earlier webinar, so I'm not going to go too much in detail because this is not going to be a very long drawn webinar. And I suggest that to do this, you should visit the earlier one, which is to do with uh, creating the USP, the first one. <clears throat> then you need to know how to describe him, right? So let's say I'm your customer and I'm your tourist. Yeah. So so you will create an avatar, a persona of mine. Uh, his name is Mohit Agarwal. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's based out of Delhi and he's got um, uh, this company and he, he's got children and he's, 
he loves to travel to these places for photography or for his yoga meditation or for xyz whatever experiences and this is exactly what i provide to people like him and i want more and more people who suit this profile who are exactly like him or somewhat like him because they are the ones who will appreciate my little place my homestay my way of working in tourism yeah, so so describe him and then you can replicate and you can look for people like him so it's very important to to create that persona the right kind of client right and it could be like three different kinds of clients or four different kind of clients because you've got other things to offer for example you know if it's a trekking lodge the trekking lodge will offer treks but the trekking lodge can also offer bird watching or a trekking lodge can also offer local camping experience for families who have never camped before yeah so you could you could have two or three kinds of people who would be your customers and eventually they'll be your emissaries too uh ha ji chai theek hai thank you very much thank you dusri chai aa gayi ha dusri chai aa gayi thank you sorry friends um, i've got um uh, this person asking me for tea and okay so so back to how you will describe go back to the same webinar which i uh, talked about earlier in detail and you'd be able to get this point uh, in in detail and you'd be able to create the kind of persona that you are looking for then depending on the kind of client you've got or you want you will build collaterals your brochures your website your social media accounts will talk about those things that will attract your kind of client now um uh, you know so 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 use your usp jargon for attracting your ideal client just to give you an idea you know it's every nature lovers first choice so it's for nature lovers right it's as a gift bird in god just to give you an idea what um you know what we're talking about here and then use these uh, if you're on if you're good on facebook or you good on linkedin or you tweet a lot or you send whatsapp messages or you create videos whatever you do right you you do it in a fashion where you can sustain it uh, don't do random things i i suggest that if you if you're too good with instagram then just stick to instagram and if you've got time for one more then do one more but don't go overboard that i want to be everywhere and eventually uh, you will see that your inputs are huge to manage all the resources and you're not being able to sustain it and you'll start dropping it and then your your image building will reduce so uh, your website should also talk about and showcase your place you know what you're good at you can make use of qr codes that people can scan people are today people are internet savvy so they will just take their phone and uh, scan the code and there you they go they will go straight to your website uh, and you should have a very strong call to action i'm not getting into many details here because i want to come to the point but i'm i'm doing this recap because it's important to understand uh where gaurav and i are heading so <clears throat> yeah just to uh, so I was here last night we there's a 150 year old uh, uh british bungalow up in the hills near nepal border uh, which we refurbished and it's absolutely stunning and it's full of birds and flowers and things like that so i was here last night and today i'm uh, headed to towards delhi slowly um just showing you this photo of a homestay so it's got a kitchen where you can do your own thing and there are two helpers to help you out and it's really really pretty it's a 150 year old house um also this place abbot mount is very famous uh, i think it's one of the uh, most um, i mean they say that it's a haunted place or whatever you know and i don't believe in all this but it's a, it's a beautiful place up in the himalayas just to show you what the homestay can be like now every homestay has spaces right so we talked about uh, 
the clients and we talked about collaterals. Now, each homestay will have spaces, right? You'll have your sacred spaces, you'll have your yoga meditation spaces, or you'll have your, you know, equipment or artifacts, you know, spaces for all of that, or you'll have a library there, you know, where, so, so how do you manage these spaces? These spaces, of course, we've talked about management and compliances, how to manage these spaces so that these spaces are shining all the time and they're accessible to people so that they, they can sit there and do what they have to do with those spaces, right? Now, but you need to create those spaces according to the USP of your homestay. So, so these are just some examples here. So if it's a sacred room and you do your puja, prayers, whatever you do, um, or there's a library that you've got, or there's a photo gallery or a, your art gallery that you have, or uh, any place where you've displayed your grandparents' things, your kitchen, your uh, dining room, a place where you have a Bukhari uh, or a fireplace to sit around, um, maybe an outdoor space where you can have your bonfire. Depending on <clears throat> what your client is looking for and what is the USP of your place, right? You, you, you create those spaces and you maintain them well so that everything that he, he sees, the client sees or touches or feels or tastes or smells or hears is fantastic. It's out of the world, right? Because there's a story behind it. And the story is that because that place is like that, you've created the USP and those kind of clients are coming who appreciate your area, your region, your landscape, and which is why you have those value systems. And once you have those value systems, then those have to be projected through your collateral social media, uh, um, brochures, expired, all your marketing material. If you've got a sun deck, or maybe you've got a souvenir shop where people love to buy, you know, when they go back home, they want a moment or they want uh, some sort of uh, uh, memory to carry back home. So you can use your souvenir shop or sell uh, local handicrafts and you can get into fair trade and you can there's no middleman in it if there's no middleman in it and there's and you can procure things from the local community and and bring it to uh, bring an opportunity for your clients to buy from you you can make a profit if you like as long as it's absolutely fair <clears throat> another one and then you've got uh, activities right what do you do with your clients what sort of activities are you giving depending on your usp um, you can create activities. For example, that you know, if you're in a bird rich area, then you can do bird watching. If you're in a trekking area, then you can do treks. If you're doing sort of, uh, uh, let's say, catch and release fishing, you know, or let's say you do you do any sort of um, art or craft, or uh, or or there are there's a community interface that you can showcase. So there are depending on what your USP is, you must project that all the time. So your spaces and your activities. Because when people come to these places, the small places, they're not coming to a regular hotel. They're coming to a place to experience things. And if you can make them experience, they just go back so much more richer. You know, they've got so much more um, value in their pockets. They've got, they've got life experiences, which makes them rich. And it's not just the money that makes people rich. So travel intelligence develops because because they've experienced something which they love or they have never experienced before. So activity-based um, uh, lodges do a lot better than just the ones that provide only accommodation and food. How you greet them, you know, uh, what sort of... Um, uh, so this is the temple town I am in right now. This has 1,500 to 2,500-year-old temples up in the Himalayas all Shiva temples, and you can see there's a, uh, there's a Pujari, there's a priest sitting there in one of the temples. So I'm, so 
from here uh, gorab is going to take on but let me just quickly tell you why home stays are important so like i said experiences are extremely important because they 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 let you expand your vision and enrich your lives which hotels sometimes fail to do because um, they're very mechanical in nature so so let me read this out to you you know hotel reception hotel has a reception area it's got standard operating procedures it's largely your own experience you're there for work or they you're there for business so they also have lower inputs because they're large hotels right so they can drop cost so many people will go to you and say oh i get obro is at um, so and so price and you're charging me almost that or i'm getting taj hotel for that price why are you charging me that they fail to understand that the there are many 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 uh, uncertainties in running a home stay as compared to a hotel right so home stay will have larger inputs because there may be absence of sops and there are seasonality changes or uh, they could be um seasons when they can't do any business or they've got a family wedding or they've got some other issues and or they may have to run to the hospital for regular checkups and they can't take you in on those dates yeah so so personalized approach too much energy that goes in of the entire family or a team or a owner to to make sure that you're happy you're getting all that what you want yeah they could be doing the housekeeping themselves they could be cooking food for you yeah so using your time energy resources a hotel is more or less a place to spend your nights and there you may go out looking for experiences on your own or with other guides whereas homestay can provide you all of that visitors will come to homestay for experiences human resources maintenance is is a challenge sometimes for homestay people whereas hiring and maintaining those compliances and other things is a lot more easy for hotels um once established family oriented values develop uh within the teams which pass on to to tourists right so so sometimes you'll find that um there are people who have been working with a homestay in various capacities over 20 years 30 years 50 years 40 years and they they are part of the family now right but they don't have any written down sops right they may have their own physical challenges and other things but they are part of them so 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 then a lot of interaction happens which makes you makes your experience rich they could be you know like i i i met one gentleman the other day who used to work with somebody's home stay and he plays flute you know so so he knows a lot about music yeah the local music and he was playing flute for us yeah and he says i i have no problem playing flute for you because i love it and i don't want any money in it and then he he started to discuss how his his um, elder son is going through this problem or daughter's married somewhere else and x y z and then you suddenly start to notice that how you know how full you are of yourself that you can't even appreciate other people usually in a in a busy city like delhi and look at the challenges that these people are facing you know uh, up in the hills or on the remote places so so you know different and they know different so there's a lot of oneness that sort of comes in it's not just a transactional game anymore uh, i've given so much money and this is what i should get you know so, so that's how your life becomes more rich so okay over to you gorav now you take take on and i'll i'll uh, so friends if you've got uh, any questions to ask keep putting them in the chat so that i can uh, answer them later or gorav can answer them later thanks mohit gorav go ahead. yeah thanks so like mohit mentioned uh, there is a very personalized approach to homestays those of you who have stayed in hotels would know you know a hotel is a place you go check in go to your room and then you more or less do everything on your own whereas in a homestay uh, like mohit said the team itself will be taking care of most of your experiences and there is a very 
personal approach. You will meet the owner, you will interact with the owner or manager uh, at most of the time. There are a number of activities that homestays offer, which of course use energy, times and uh, time and resources. So this is including nature walk, maybe a village visit. You know, if you're in a wildlife area like Gir or Bandogar or Corbett, you'll have jungle safaris. Uh, spending the day in the lap of nature. Or, you know, these places are also great for family get togethers, you know, hotel, uh, everyone's in their own room, you're not really doing much. Whereas a homestay is a place where everyone can get together in the common space, uh, have some great experiences. And of course, uh, due to the strain on resources, uh, we are seeing a lot of homestays starting to rely on natural resources. So whether they have their own organic gardens or whether they're using solar power, uh, you know, solar cookers like the one in the uh, photo are becoming more and more popular. And like I said, uh, you know, homestay is a nice place for a meal in a garden area. You're not going to get this experience in a hotel without having to, you know, shell out a bomb for it. So, of course, as a, a homestay, you can't stay small. You'll always think about how to scale up your business and how to engage your visitors more. So there is a personalized approach that you can adopt. This will showcase your own knowledge in uh, in the local area. So whether it's the environment, local environment, or the local culture, or uh, you know, local traditions, you can showcase your knowledge, and this will make your homestay unique, and it'll make it truly experiential. Engage with the visitors as much as possible through signs and posters. Uh, it's of course, once you start scaling up, it's going to be impossible to, uh, you know, interact with every guest. Where are the bathrooms? Where is the common area? Where is the dining area? So with this signs and posters become very useful. Uh, it's also a great way to advertise your do's and don'ts, or maybe you can showcase your management techniques as well. You know, we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, there's the involvement of family and team at a very personal level. If you go to a hotel, you're not going to meet the manager. You're not going to meet the cook. You're not going to meet uh, most of the staff that works behind the scenes. Whereas, uh, sorry, that is in a hotel. Whereas in a homestay, you're going to meet all these people regularly. You know, you get to interact with them. It's a very different feel. It's a very personalized feel. And of course, as a homestay owner, you're going to be seeking referrals. You're going to be asking people to return. Uh, you know, referrals go a long way in uh, getting uh, new clients and especially now with Instagram. And when you ask them to return, you can always substanti uh, substantiate it with a gift or two. You know, it doesn't have to be a very big gift. It can be a small gift, maybe a small discount the next time they visit or a little souvenir for, you know, uh, someone you've had a really great experience with. Uh, local sweets, local, uh, small local handicrafts. So if you have selfie points, uh, again, like we mentioned, social media has become such a big uh, uh, medium for referrals and testimonials, especially now with travel influencers. So imagine how much it would uh, benefit your homestay if you had a, let's say, a fairly well-known travel influencer advertising your homestay and recommending it on their own social media. So a selfie point, a nice place to take a video, all these uh, might not seem important, but these are small touches that can uh, yield great results. And of course, thanking them with general, genuine gratitude, you know, uh, make your feelings genuine. Uh, you know, it shouldn't be an impersonal thank you. It should, you know, heartfelt, be personal with them, be uh, human with them, I'd say. And you can always urge them to look at sustainability. You know, uh, we've had a lot of problems in gear earlier with the guests who were bringing in a lot of plastic, single use plastic, dumping it wherever. And, you know, slowly but surely we feel that uh, we've managed to change a lot of minds. Uh, I know in the Himalayas, uh, we had this problem with Maggie packets. A lot of places still do, you know, Maggie in the Himalayas is a very popular thing. And, uh, you know, we've asked people to look at, uh, you know, more sustainable means uh, to maybe help uh, curb this problem. And of course, if you come across any experts, you can always ask them for help with their knowledge. You know, maybe this person uh, 
can help you uh, is an architect or you know can help you design your place in a more sustainable manner and you can always use their expertise and of course remind them periodically about your progress so even once they leave take their number put them in a whatsapp group and you can or a broadcast list and you can regularly give them updates so for example you know uh, we have started bird watching tours now or we had a recent trek and uh, you know this is what uh, you know the our guest said or you know we had a really great safari and we saw six tigers on the safari and we saw cubs so this not only informs them about your progress but it also keeps reminding them about you you know there are chances that uh, your visitors go home and after two months or so they've forgotten that place whereas if you keep reminding them uh, of course you know you don't you're not reminding them uh, saying you know come and stay with us again bring new people but they are more likely to recommend you to someone if the if your name is on the tip of their tongue So of course, show, uh, showcase your environmental, social, and cultural aspects. You know, nature walks. Uh, Mohit is right now in Jageshwar, which has beautiful forests, and you know, uh, it's great for uh, nat- uh, forest walks. Uh, similarly, you know, play- people will go to places like Gir only for jungle safaris, but there is such a rich tribal culture there that can be showcased. So make use of every resource that your location is offering you. signage is again uh, you know very useful and they don't have to be very creative you know they can be straight forward uh, maybe they pointing out where different cottages are or you know do's and don'ts or where the parking area is and of course there's the involvement of family and you know uh, like we said team that becomes family at a homestay and referrals again going to stress this again because it is a very important point and many people uh, keep forgetting it uh, you know ask for video testimonials ask for uh, trip advisor reviews uh, you know video testimonials can go on your uh, instagram they can go on your youtube very useful uh, when it comes to driving business your way again selfie points social media and yes once again i'm going to stress testimonials and reviews so so for example these are just some of the screenshots they've uh, we've uh, taken from our uh, you know our uh, testimonials that we've gotten from our guests at our lodges so again various beautiful points where you can have a beautiful uh, you know not only have a great background for your testimonial but it also kind of showcases what your lodge is offering and of course show gratitude you know practice it for yourself you know what you are gra- grateful for uh, preach it to your guest you know if you are grateful for some small action of this tell them they feel good about it and trust me these small acts they will remember for a long time and ask for their help on sustainability you know uh, talk about your sustainability goals see if they can contribute in some way and of course this will help you periodically progress and scale up your homestay so basically in short you can be a market leader with the help of three simple points so one is communicating uh, with your guests through genuine inclusivity empathy oneness gratitude uh, feedback mechanisms so you know whether they have complaints or suggestions you know asking for their help uh, asking for their knowledge and reviews and testimonials and don't 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 forget to ask your guests for referrals uh it's not only a great uh, process but it's also a fairly cheap one so if, it, if you're looking to lower your client acquisition cost referrals and testimonials go a long way so let's talk about the environmental aspects you know when it comes to uh, engaging your visitors so these are very basic things some of them might already be you may already be following uh eco friendly planning so this is where your uh, you know your uh, buildings are not uh, destroying too much of nature or green materials when you're building uh cleanliness and hygiene so you can ensure that your lodge waste is responsibly disposed disposed of so whether this is your kitchen waste or your uh, sewage systems you know either way uh this is a big 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 point uh you can ensure that your signs are eco friendly and the following set guidelines as well 
if you go to the planetera website or uh, you know you can even join their global community tourism network you can network with their uh, with various other community tourism stakeholders you can network with them and they will always be able to help you similarly uh, asian ecotourism network has uh, guidelines which are very easy to find and follow you can ensure that your accommodation facilities are eco friendly and they're causing minimal damage to the existing ecosystem so if you are landscaping and you know if you're making your garden of course try not to introduce too many foreign uh, you know uh, introduced plants you know use local varieties uh, maybe if you are uh, if you have a lot of trees in your uh, thing already in your uh, area already it doesn't make sense to cut them down and plant new trees you know use the existing ecosystem and use local plant varieties to enhance the authentic beauty of the place you are situated in and cultural aspects so in your homestay maybe you can have your team wearing traditional attire uh, you know your team or your reception staff uh, you can showcase local cuisine even if it's only a few days a week uh, that is a big plus uh, traditional architecture especially in the himalayas you know uh, beautiful kumaui garhwali architecture is always a big plus uh you can have local art form experiences maybe you can host some local dances local plays local musicians and you know use your uh, use your knowledge of uh, the local culture to think about what unique local experiences you can provide to your guests and what destination usps you can offer uh social aspects as well so encourage the buying of fair trade local handicrafts and souvenirs so fair trade handicrafts basically means that you are not uh, paying any middleman you know, nobody is profiting nobody is exploiting uh, the people who are making these crafts these are all uh, you know the only people benefiting are you and uh, the people creating these souvenirs the local people uh, you can use your sign signages to properly communicate do's and don'ts you can have literature as well you know maybe a small brochure or a poster and you can encourage appropriate interaction between locals and visitors you know make sure that uh, you the interactions that uh, locals have with your with your visitors and vice versa is largely positive you don't want uh, you don't want local communities thinking that your guests are always rude and uh, you know rude and bossy similarly you know uh, people should always have a great experience whenever they visit a place so for that you can always ensure that visitors follow social norms uh, if they are visiting temples you can always remind them to dress appropriately remove their chappals uh, you know uh, if they are going into nature you can uh, or into people's homes you can advise them what to do and what not to do and this discourage this builds a bond between your local community and your visitors and in some places you may Uh, need to make use of uh, a local guide or a local translator so be ready for all this and of course all these three aspects will require proper management so you can engage with organizations like asian ecotourism network and planetera they are great for networking with already established uh, homestays you know they have their own resources their own norms that you can uh, follow and you know you can ask them ask for their help as well uh pass participate in various online fora you know uh, there are plenty on facebook right now uh, participate in them learn from others maybe you have something that you can teach someone else as well uh study market trends you know if people are slowly veering away from one trend you don't want to spend too much uh, time energy and money uh, you know trying to promote that when uh, clearly uh, people are moving away from that and uh employ simple basic management tools so this is more for your internal team uh, mind mapping to do list weekly planning this would uh, <clears throat> sorry uh, so this will help gel your team properly it will get them aligned on the correct path and you know once visitors come uh, your entire team is on the same page on how to deal with your visitors and if possible showcase your management techniques to visitors uh, through signs you know you can have a poster showing them what you believe in you can have a small poster showing your system uh, of course there will be some things that you will have to keep confidential but 
by and large, you can always share with your guests. So basically, that is about it. Uh, like we said, this is going. This was a very short webinar. Uh, management techniques, referrals. Uh, these are the most important things. And of course, make use of everything that uh, your destination can provide, whether it's uh, social aspects, cultural aspects, or even environmental. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Um, this was uh, very well um, articulated, very well described, and I think you, you've done a wonderful job. Um, uh, you know, our, our guest here today um, will definitely carry back um, a lot of information that we've given today and implement it. But friends, feel free to uh, get in touch with us. For any information you need, you know, uh, we've got, of course, in one hour, we cannot cover everything in 45 minutes. But we've got lots of great ideas, lots of interesting things in terms of marketing and meeting clients' expectations. So feel free to ask for anything. The help is absolutely free. We're not charging anything for it now. Uh, later, it'll be turned into a course, which you can sign up for. It won't be very expensive. But that's later. That's not now. That's... Um, maybe six months down the line. Right now, if you're running a homestay or planning a homestay or thinking of building a little house somewhere which you want to run uh, on Airbnb or um, or anything of that sort, do give a call and or send a WhatsApp message. Let me let me put down. Uh, Gaurav, you also put down your WhatsApp uh, sure. message and I'll also uh, WhatsApp number and I'll also do it. And then we will help anyone who's wanting to get more information on this. This uh, webinar will go on YouTube tomorrow and you'll get a replay link anyway uh, through our automated system. So so keep a lookout for it. And if you want to share it with other people, uh, go ahead and do it. There is no problem with it. Ask your friends to look at sustainability and see if they are looking, If uh, ask your friends, family, people who are running these little homestays to look at sustainability. Also, ask them to pledge to convert every tourist to an eco-tourist. An eco-tourist who will take your cause forward and will aid conservation, will help nature, and whatever he's out there for uh, will enrich himself. Yeah, so so I think it's 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 an important uh, journey that we are on, but I'll tell you, it's so much fun. It's so such a great game there to play. Um, yesterday, when I was driving up to Abbott Mount with Bhuvan, uh, who's also a friend and a colleague and uh, somebody who's been uh, managing the lodges, we stopped at an old house and we looked at the roof uh, out of stone and slate. And there was this lady who was cutting grass and feeding the cows. And she said, you know, it's difficult to maintain the, um, this roof, uh, which was made about 100 years ago by her grandfather or great-grandfather. But she's not going to move to tin or to any modern roof because this has an energy system which keeps her family together and it, it keeps them going. Now, whatever that was... Uh, I couldn't go too much in detail with her, but just for her to say and realize that there's an the energy system that revolves around it means a lot to me. So, so traditional architecture has its own value systems, and you know whether you would have a little cupboard kept only for bees to to make their hives in, with a little hole from outside, or uh, you would have a place for your your cows. Or, or, or you would have a place for um, sparrows to nest or, you know, in Netherlands now they started to build um, uh, swift nests in their roofs so that your know, swifts can come and nest in their houses. So, so many such areas, you know, um, uh, can be carved out in your homes, in your home states. Uh, and there are many such elements. So friends, thank you for being here. And and uh, really, really appreciate it. The next one we are going to do a month later, but we'll announce a date. Wh which one uh, do you think we want to do, uh, Gaurav? 
So I think uh, uh, I think value additions and experiences would be a good follow up. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah. So experiences and value additions is so we'll have many 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 uh, experiences of homestays listed out uh, and which will showcase. You can see how your homestay matches any of those, and what you can do with it to make it more meaningful and sustainable for people. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.